Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to look at what we call the angle of parallax. One of the ways that we were able to figure the distance to stars before we had really any other method was called the angle of parallax. It turns out that when we observe a star from the Earth, when the Earth is in this position in its orbit relative to the Sun and the star, we can draw a line of uh, a line directly from the Earth to the star and find its location relative to stars that are really, really far away from it. So here, let's say that these are the stars that are really far away and basically do not change position any time during the year because the movement of the Earth is insignificant compared to the enormous distances of those stars, then that star would show up against the background of stars in a particular location. So the star would be over there at that point in the Earth's orbit. But three months later, when the Earth is over here, and then you look at the star, you can see that this star would now appear at a different location relative to the background stars. And this angle, which is this angle right here, it's called the angle of parallax, which is the same as this angle right there, can be measured by seeing where that star appears at different times in the Earth's orbit. The larger that angle, the closer the star. The smaller the angle, the farther away. For example, if we take a look at this far away star right there, you can see that the relative positioning of where it would appear at this point in the Earth's orbit and then where it would appear at some other point in the Earth's orbit, you can see that that angle would be a lot smaller and so therefore you realize then that the object is a lot farther away. Hmm, I didn't quite draw that correctly, did I? So let me try that again. So it's actually like this. So, very, so it would only be a minuscule movement in the star's position relative to the faraway stars, and so therefore we would know that the star is much farther away. The equation to actually figure out the distance is right here. The distance in parsecs to that star that we are trying to find the angle of parallax of is equal to 1 divided by the angle measured in arc seconds. With other words, if the angle that we measure is one arc second, then the distance to the star would be one parsec, which is 3.26 light years. Now, as an example, what if the angle, what if theta was equal to a half arc second? Then you know that the distance is equal to one divided by one half, which is equal to two, and of course the units would be two parsecs. So it would be one parsec divided by one half, which is two parsecs. What if the angle was one third of an arc second? If the angle measure was equal to one-third of an arc second, then the distance would be one parsec divided by one-third, which is equal to three parsecs, and so forth. So whatever the fraction is, we take the inverse of that, and that would be the distance in parsecs. Now, back in the old days when we had, you know, the ability only to read the we had the ability only to read the angle of parallax to maybe the best we could do would be about a fifth of an arc second, which means that we were able to find the distance of stars out to about five parsecs, which was about 15, 16 light years, and that was the best we could do. So we could actually find the distance to about the 100 nearest stars using this particular technique, because there's about 100 stars within about 15, 16 light years from the Earth or from our Sun. So that was actually a pretty good method to find the distance to those stars and then once we found the distance to those stars and we applied our knowledge about what those stars looked like, what color they were, what temperature they were, we were able to find out some amazing things and we'll show you in a later video what, that reading, uh, what we actually did with that. But here is sufficient to see that using the angle of parallax, it actually is, we're able to find the distance to those stars. It's kind of the way our eyes work. Our eyes, the reason why we have two eyes is because we can look at the same thing from two different directions. Our brain will take that angle and from that angle we actually get depth perception. So if we didn't have two eyes, it would be very difficult for us to have depth perception. Matter of fact, try it, cover up one of the eyes, look around you, and all of a sudden you realize it's pretty difficult to figure out how far things are. With two eyes open, it is much easier. And so this is kind of like a two-eyed situation where we look at the same thing from two different directions, even though it's three months apart. And we can then, of course, see what the angle is, and from that we can figure out the distance. In order to improve our ability, what we sometimes do is we try to look at the same object from this position six months earlier and then we take the angular measurement to the object and then you can see that we can measure a much bigger angle. So what we then do is we take the angle of parallax, we take this angle and divide it by two. We can then say, if we call this angle phi, we can then say that theta is simply phi divided by two 
just to get a better reading on it because those angles are so hard to measure we try to get as much of a distance over here as possible notice that this distance from the sun to the earth here is one arc one astronomical unit if we take the total distance across the whole or orbit the diameter of the orbit it would be two astronomical units and so you get a, a better reading on that it's of course more difficult to do because here you would be looking at the object at sunrise or sunset or right after sunset or just before sunrise and the same over here to be able to get that larger angle it's a lot easier to measure it when the difference is like that and that's the method we use for the angle of parallax